Welcome back to the broadcast. When it comes to our children, you always want the best in, in, for everything they do, right? Success, health, education, but sometimes things just don't go as planned. Of course, I know very well about that. My son has autism, but today we're talking about kiddos with ADHD, and here to talk to us a little bit about it is Crystal Beetle from our children's house, right? Yes, ma'am. Baylor's facility, yes. right? In yes. Frisco. Yes. So tell me a little bit about ADHD. What is it? ADHD is not the inability to pay attention, like a lot of people think it is. It, what it really is, is the inability to selectively attend. So you have difficulty paying attention to what's important. You're paying attention to everything, the sights, the smells, the sounds, everything around you. Okay, so we're not just talking potentially about a hyperactive child. This is serious, because I think about my five-year-old who is bouncing off the wall. She doesn't stop talking from 645 <laughs> till, you know, 12 hours. <laughs> so what are the signs? How do you know it's something to be concerned about? Well, there's actually three different subtypes of ADHD. So you have your inattentive, you have your hyperactive impulsive, or you have combined type. So you're looking at a wide variety of things. So you're looking for um, your classic inability to pay attention and attention and your hyperactivity, but you're also looking at um, impulsivity, just getting up and doing things rather than thinking about their consequences. Um, difficulty finishing tasks. So you've got unfinished work or you know a lot of different projects that have started, but nothing really completed. Um, careless mistakes on work. Gaps in learning that can't be explained by absences or other things like that. Um, you know, just difficulty standing in line, waiting in line. Paying uh, frequent interrupting. Order, stuff like that. Yes. Which my daughter's a talker. She's gotten in trouble a couple <laughs> times at school because yes. she's like her mama. Um, <laughs> what are some of the things that you would do if someone, like, what would, what, when should I bring a child to you to say, I'm kind of worried, can you evaluate right. my child? You know, as the parent, any time that you have concerns is a good time to get, you know, further help or, some, you know, evaluation and that kind of thing. But really the key that you're looking for is significant impairment, not just, you know, this is kind of bothersome, mm -hmm. but significant impairment in multiple settings, more than one setting. So it's impairing your school performance, your social performance. Friends are starting to kind of shy away because you're too loud or overly, um, overly excited or you know, tend to be a little bossy and controlling. Um, difficulty at home, either you know, it's suffering in your ability to finish chores, daily household tasks, um, you're She's going through sleep. these symptoms and I'm like, hmm. <laughs> and, and this is not just kids. <laughs> sure. ADHD is not just a childhood problem. This can extend into college, into adulthood as well. So you can diagnose later on in life. ADHD, Absolutely. totally fine, at least you think. Absolutely. And then you get to college and something happens and yes. you connect the dots and it could be ADHD. When we look at diagnosis, we do want to go back and we want to look at, you know, are these problems things that were there in childhood too? You know, even with adults, we like to get a parent perspective if we can. You know, we know in not, not all cases that's possible, mm -hmm. but we want to go back and look, you know, is this something that just started in high school or college, or has this been a lifelong prevalent problem that they've been able to cope with for a while? You know, there's a lot of other things that can mimic ADHD, sure. um, anxiety, depression, those things can very look. much <laughs> look like, you know, look like sure. inattention and hyperactivity, restlessness. Uh, so there's other things that we want to rule out, but absolutely, we can diagnose things well into adulthood. So what can you do? So you get the diagnosis, your child or you have ADHD, yes. what next? Medication is an option, but medication is not the only option. That's then uh, that's important because I think uh, yes. people hear ADHD and the first thing they want to do is is there a medication? I hear <laughs> there's a medication, right? And you're saying that's not necessarily the first step, right? Research will say that medication works and it does, but behavioral therapy works, um, occupational therapy works. Uh, exercise and extra sleep also work just as well as medication. How much extra sleep do you need? Uh, do you think? Thirty minutes a night. That's the it? research is showing that an additional thirty minutes a night can make a tremendous difference. And then ideally, thirty minutes of exercise in the morning or before tasks that take a lot of mental effort. And what so do these school. things do? Do they help you focus more? Stay it does. On task? It does. And how does that all work? Is it something in the Not brain? Not really sure. Yeah, yeah, we're still trying to figure that out. Exactly. We know that there's something to do with the neurological regulation and. You know, regulation of all those systems. There's a lot of sensory 
you know, sure. that components that go into attention so I, and focus. And kind of, I like to say, like with autism, you kind of have to learn how to function with yes. the, the issue, right? And that's really what we're doing. ADHD medication does not cure ADHD. It doesn't make it go away. It masks the symptoms and it makes it. it easier to deal with it. But medication doesn't teach. So these kids that are on medication, as soon as the medication stops, they haven't necessarily learned They're skills. They're back to bouncing off the wall. Exactly. Again. So right. we want to teach those skills so that they're able to, like you said, compensate and cope I love with it. these. Well, there's help out there, which Absolutely. is the great news, right? And you can our learn more house. about our children's <laughs> house at Baylor Frisco by going to thebroadcasttv.com. Just click on today's links, and we're back with more of the broadcast right after this.